Hey YouTube, this is Farwiz23 and I'm here to review the final, it's another one of my book reviews, I'm here to review the final book in the Alex Rider series, Scorpio Rising. And as I predicted, my hopes, my low hopes were well met. Um, quick synopsis, spoilers. Okay, Alex Rider has turned 15 now, and the bad guys have an evil plot. Their plot is, upon contact by this really rich guy, who wants to get a set of statues back to his home country. The plan of the newest Scorpio member, who... I don't even know his freaking name. I don't care. <laughs> These are such interchangeable villains. Yes, they have a different plan and a whole methodology, but seriously, they're freaking interchangeable. Alex Ryder, with the help of the 16th clone that he fought at the end of Point Blanc, the second book who's actually still alive, he went to, like, the secret compound, where I don't really know why they don't just kill him exactly, but apparently they keep him alive because he's interesting. They rescue the clone, and who looks exactly like Alex Ryder because of the plastic surgery that was done. They want to use incriminating photographs of Alex Ryder in combination with the clone, whose name is Julius Grief, to make it, to expose the fact that Alex is a secret agent working for MI6, and coerce the British government into, through the, through the threat of exposing this information to make it absolutely infallible that Alex is indeed, not, non-disputable that Alex is indeed a secret agent, and force them to bring these statues back. That's the big plan. And we got this villain who's into pain and stuff. Alex is recruited despite the, the chagrin of his housekeeper who agrees to go with him this time. Through an entire setup plot, there's like the setup plot that looks like the that there's this international school in Cairo that it looks like they're going to try to kidnap some of the kids and hold them hostage for money. But the truth is, the whole thing is nothing but a plot to get Alex. That's all it is. It's nothing but a, a plan to lure him in. A couple of interesting things happen here, and it, it this book suffers from the problem of a lot of end of series books. It's not a problem, but it's kind of what you do as a writer in many cases the world has to inevitably change in some way. The only way you can really end the series is you have to just kind of end certain plot threads and say, okay, this series cannot continue because this is gone now. Like, there's no way this could possibly ever continue the way it is. And Alex's housekeeper goes with him. She is ultimately captured along with Alex, and there was a thought in her mind... Um, uh, Jack Starbright. A thought in her mind as Alex was, like, going off to school one day, that she's thinking, you know what, I think it's time to go. Like, she'd been contacted by her family in America that she might want to come back because of some family issues, and she's like, you know what, I've been here long enough after Ian's death, I think it's time I moved on. And it would have to, Alex would have to find another foster family. And Alex, the bad guy captures them both and says, you know, Alex, I'm going to put you through so much pain. Wahahaha. <laughs> and... Through a very elaborate setup of Alex and Jack being held in separate cells, Jack is able to actually escape from her cell, being video recorded, and Alex has shown her killed. Which I give credit was actually a really good fake out because I read it and I'm like, did, did you just kill Jack Starbright? And yeah, Jack's dead. Okay, um, that's kind of interesting. Okay, you kind of rev up the plot a little bit. Thanks a lot for taking nine fucking books to do it, Anthony. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, Anthony. I'm really sorry if I'm being so blisteringly honest with you, but just, it took you nine books to do something actually kind of interesting. That's actually reasonably interesting. Um, we actually see Smithers, uh, one of my favorite members of MI6, where we discover that Smithers is wearing a fat suit. It, and it actually never occurred to me throughout the whole series that he just, he's not an obese person, he's just an obese person, a person inside an obese suit. And he's actually able to unzip his entire suit and actually fall out of it to dis to dis to unveil his disguise because he went with Alex and Jack to Cairo, and he uses it to escape unnoticed. And so that, that was kind of a cool reveal. Like, oh, cool! He's like the master. Like he, he even he himself is 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 a mask, and people don't know who he is because it's 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 uh, it's the spy world, it's espionage, and all that crap. Um, Alex ends up going to fight head on with Julius Grief, and. Um, Alex shoots and kills Julius Grief. Alex gets a hold of a gun and shoots and kills Julius Grief. Um, and of course, through impossible circumstances, he manages to escape his own imprisonment. Um, pack of cigarettes and a scorpion. And he sh up, up and shoots and kills Julius Grief. Um, as well as stopping the big bad guy's plot, which actually does involve the British... Like, like a, um, 
a diplomatic messenger from Britain. It's really weird. They're going to make it look like Alex killed him, killed this person, even though it's not Alex, it's Julius, but it looks exactly, exactly like him, so who would refute it? Um, um, but Alex stopped that plot, and he killed Julius, and he stopped the bad guy. Rena? I can't remember what the guy's name is. It's, it's some... He's some twisted guy who likes pain. Um, and I have the book right in front of me. I could totally just look it up, what the guy's name is. I can't... Uh, oh, Razim. Razim is his name. Um, and they break into Razim's secret base, and they kill Razim. And, and at the end of it, we reveal that... Something that's really stupid. Alan Blunt's retiring in this book, but this is the last thing he's going to do. And Alan... Ms. Jones totally calls out Alan Blunt because Alex is actually shot at while he's in his school. Like, bullet fire is put through the window of his class. Well, he's like, he's telling all the other classmates, get down, get down! And they're like shooting him and trying to kill him and Alex is just pissed off and that's kind of what inspires him to go on this mission when they go and talk to him regarding what happened. It turns out Alan Blunt actually ordered that shot. He ordered that shot to basically coerce Alex to go and it's like, okay, am I supposed to like these people now? Like, I... <laughs> Anthony, you're not making me appeal to these people's sensibilities. You're like there was some, that there was a great moral right here. Oh, it was right for him to go because it was because because you know they because it was it was uh, patriotism and you know he had to do the right thing to do the right thing. Like it, no, like, <laughs> um, um, Alex ends up going to live with Sabina, his girlfriend, and her father over in America. That's how the book ends. Alex just leaves. Um, his file completely closed and, like, nobody knows who he is now. Um, Scorpio completely disbanded because for the third and final time they've lost to a to now 15-year-old. A 14-year-old previously. And, well, it's, so I'm, you did some interesting stuff, Anthony. A, a little too late. I, I'm sorry, that's the only thing that really got me. If you started killing people, let me talk about some things that you could have done that could have been really, really interesting in this series. First of all, Alex doesn't change. That's something that I find really kind of unnerving about Alex as a character. Alex has gone through nine books now where he has seen people killed and people died and he's killed people himself. Other than the last book, Alex really doesn't have any kind of psychological... At least we don't see him through his action have any kind of psychological effect of this. If I'm... If in any of these statements, I am completely oversimplifying this, I'm sorry. If you think I'm just totally oversimplifying this, I'm sorry. But you can't... You cannot tell me that this was written for children. You, you can't. This is, this is teenager, young adult, even though he's 14. I mean, you're definitely going for a teenage audience here. And you're not going to convince me that this 14-year-old lives in a freaking bubble. He does think about these things, but it never affects his psyche. It never affects how he views the world or how he thinks about the world. It never changes that. He becomes resentful of his involvement, sometimes manipulative involvement, with MI6, but we never see him how he feels about the world changes a result of it. I would almost resent the idea of having to go back to regular school and try to observe some kind of normality after all this. I, I would almost be saying, like, I can't attend regular school anymore because this isn't okay. That I've seen all this stuff. Like, I need to be going into someplace else because this is not all right. I Maybe I'm over really going too much into child psychology here, but I, I feel like that a kid would not be okay with this. That you've seen too much, you've changed too much psychologically, that you really cannot assert yourself normatively. But no, Alex Ryder's this perfect athletic 14, 15 year old kid, and he's and he's popular and da da da. It's like, like bullshit. Okay, you don't tell me all this crap happens and a kid doesn't freaking change. That's bull. Um, the villains. There doesn't. Scorpia is a really interesting idea when it's introduced, and Alex goes through some through some really interesting dynamics with uh, Julia Rothman. But Scorpia, and I kind of saw Scorpia being kind of like a main antagonist. Like, okay, the first couple books, you're kind of just setting stuff up and being like, okay, this is kind of how this series is going to work. But then Scorpia could have been really kind of interesting. That could have been in an origin point where Alex starts to really become kind of dynamically interesting. Like, maybe he almost starts to have sympathy for these bad guys. Like, because we do see the motivations of some of these bad guys. We hear about it. Like, hey, you know, I'm pissed off that I went to this war and I came back and nobody cared about it. I'm mad that I did all this stuff for my country and no one cares. You know, I do, I keep all this secret espionage information and no one, and now because our country doesn't exist, I'm defunct. My country has gone to shit ever since democracy came in and we need to restore the old world order. 
old world order. They do actually have thought a thought process behind it, and Alex... I would find it really interesting if Alex stopped their plots, but then he let them go. Like, like there's really just this interesting moral conundrum, and then Alex is trying to keep that secret from MI6 that they're still alive. And, like, that would actually be kind of reasonably interesting. That Alex has this really interesting moral conundrum with these people. Like, how do I... Because his own morality is coming into it. Saying, like, wait a minute, I don't think this is right anymore. I, Anthony, I don't know if that was something you were going for in these books, but it would have made for an interesting read. And I don't know if, and I, 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 I no, that, that's not what you were going for here, but I, I would have done that. That's kind of where I see, I, I'm a writer myself. I have two published novels. I'm, I don't think you made Alex as a character overly interesting. I don't think the stories you wrote are overly interesting. Michael Bay would like the stories you've written. Bunch of explosions, actions, guns, shots, family stuff. And But that's really what's here. If you've read one Alex Rider adventure, you've read them all. They're just, they're not dynamically interesting. They're not sociologically interesting. There's no psychological depth to any of these characters other than what we just hear about, but then nothing really comes of it. Um... They're fun to read. I'm not going to say they're not entertaining. It's just, I kind of left at the end, I was like, okay, I just watched a Michael Bay film. Like, I, I feel like that's what I'm watching. I'm not really getting anything dynamic out of this. Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, that was my thoughts on Alex Rider, Scorpio Rising, and the entire Alex Rider series as a whole. Um... So this is Firewizard23. Take care and bye-bye for now, everybody.